I wanted to do a video on the whole going to a Faeries match experience, but I've only been to one match five years ago, so if I was going to do it, I'd have to visit the Faroe Islands again. Thank you. Oh. Aha! Yes, Faro Ball in the Pharaohs at last. I took a scenic walk to the Scancy Arena in Argier to see AB versus B36. And if you get there nice and early and wait for the team bus to arrive, well, there's your first difference as the B36 players drove themselves to the ground. The cost of a ticket was 100 Faroese krona, which is equivalent to 100 Danish krona. There's no single entrance point or turnstile, but keep your eyes out for the people in green battery jackets who have the tickets. There's one main stand at the Skanti Arena, where almost all the fans sit. No segregation here. You can also sit on the wooden benches on the hillside for a decent view, or stand behind either goal. There's nothing on the other side, that is outside the ground, and sealed off by an impenetrable rope. AB walk out to Sirius by the Alan Parsons project. A quick Faroese handshake later and we were off. B36 controlled much of the game, but one argier thing that did catch my eye was their number 12, Marius Kruiger Lind. Born with only one arm, I think he might be the only player in a European top flight with a physical disability. He's in his first season with AB, and before this game had scored three in seven. And he said in an interview with Danish newspaper Extrabladet that he's been seeing a physiotherapist since he was six, so probably has better balance than most people anyway. Quick football fact side note to say there is one current top flight one-armed footballer elsewhere. Carson Pickett plays for North Carolina Courage in the NWSL, the top flight of women's football in the US. And one-handed Alex Sanchez, who plays in the Spanish fourth tier, once played in La Liga for Zaragoza. Anyway, back to Argia, and B36's dominance paid off with a couple of goals before the break. I'm sure that was enjoyed by the FM1 radio commentators and the team from the highlight show 3-2, who are also there, as they are at every game. At half-time, like all matches in the Faroese League, the kids are let onto the pitch to have a kick around. If it's half-time food vans you're interested in, then Argia ticks this box too, where you can pick up a one-ended Frankfurter hot dog for 30 kroner, a juice carton for 10, and if you want to part with 250 kroner, you can pick up an AB plush mascot. Or you can head into the clubhouse for some warm drinks and snacks, a game of table football or ping pong, or just to browse their many trophies and archive photos of winning teams. B36 scored straight after half-time and the game was good as done. 3-0 and 3 points for the Tor Sound team. It's only a few kilometres from ground to ground, so this was a nice local trip for the away fans. Apart from their ticket and maybe a plush cat, no souvenirs to take home, there's no such thing as a match programme here, so any wannabe collectors of Faroese programmes, you're out of luck. All of that was the appetizer, as the day after, Gun Dadalor came to life as 07 Vesta rocked up to play HB. If you're going, again, look for the green jackets for a ticket. There's plenty of ways in, but the main entrance is down the steps from the road. B36 and HB both have stands for their fans. The HB one is undergoing a bit of maintenance at the moment, with a few rows of seating missing. You again have the wooden benches behind the goal, and a large white seated stand where the away fans tend to house themselves. Again, no rules on where you can and can't sit, really. If the guy next to you is annoying, let's go to the other end. HB's walking out song is Jump by Van Halen, and they found themselves jumping into a 2-0 lead by half-time. No burger van here, but there is a small snack section inside the clubhouse. Small pizza focaccias were 20 kroner, and a lot of chocolate bars were 10 kroner. But they had an extensive merch table too, with scarves, pennants, shot glasses, bags, and all sorts. And yes, I did come home with a couple of goodies. Take some time to check out their many, many, many trophies, photos of their European exploits against some continental giants, and a large plaque listing every single achievement in chronological order. No messing around here. 
In the second half, after the kids had had their play, 07 Vesta clawed one back with a penalty. And then to the delight of the away fans, equalised in injury time. HB then went straight up the other end and won it, but the goal was chalked off after a lengthy consultation, sending the Vesta fans into extra hyperdrive. They'd lost their last nine meetings, so a draw was a great result to take back West. It finished 2-2. At both games, I asked some staff and fans if they'd like to be on camera to talk in detail about supporting or working for the club, but they all, very politely, said no. Fair enough, just gives me another reason to come back and try again another team someday. I spent part of the trip seeing as many stadiums as I could, as I expect most of you would, and apart from TB, Scala, Ruin and B71 Sandoy, I've seen them all. They are all even more spectacular in person, and I can't really do them justice. Steeped in a beautiful landscape, every single one. They're all very visible from the ground level and open to get up close to. You can even stand on the roof of Torsvala, such is the lie of the land. I found time to have a helicopter ride to Klagswick, a boat ride to Kalsoy on Sam, the tiny struggling mailboat, a bus ride to Kaldback for a walk past some judgmental sheep and geese, and I even found the headquarters of KVF, the company that airs 3-2. Why won't you give me a job? And if you're thinking of fitting a football match into your trip to the Faroe Islands, keep an eye on faroesoccer.com for kickoff times as they can change at short notice. But you can comfortably see two or even three games in your time there. I, of course, fully recommend it. Thanks to everyone in the Faroe Islands for being friendly and welcoming while I was there, and putting up with some of my appalling pronunciations, like the bus driver who took me to Suvu with a strained look on his face. I've brought home some cans of Nordic cider, some Faroese vodka, and plenty of magnificent memories. Go if you get the chance, you won't regret it. If you're in the UK, you can fly with Atlantic Airways from Edinburgh twice weekly, or Go to Copenhagen, where there are daily flights with Atlantic and SAS. I hope you enjoyed this very quick whiz around two grounds. I hope it gives you an idea of what a game day is like over there, and just how different it is to a Premier League game in England. Thanks as ever for watching. Tack to the Faroe Islands for having me, and hopefully, I'll see you again.